Hello, this video is focused on electron transport chain, which is the last part of the process of respiration. If we take a quick look at this diagram, and I know we've started each time with this one, um, but what this is showing are the different steps of the process of respiration. Electron transport chain is the last step. It's taking place inside of the membrane of the mitochondrion. Specifically, it's actually happening embedded in the membrane. Uh, the Krebs cycle is taking place in this area called the matrix, which is like the fluid on the inside. ETC is happening in the membrane, just like the light-dependent reactions were happening like in the membrane of the thylakoid last chapter when we were talking about the process of photosynthesis. So we'll get that guy out of the way and start looking at this diagram. What this does is it shows us the entire process of electron transport chain as it's happening inside the membrane. So there's a couple of things to talk about first. The beginning portion of this is just where everything's happening. The matrix is the fluid portion of the membrane. The inner membrane is on the inside. It's like a barrier and then the, uh, the membrane is sort of in between there. You have to think of this as almost like continuing around and creating a circle. The diagram on the board will do a little bit of a better job representing this and, um, and like how there's space on the inside here where these hydrogens will eventually be trapped, just like they were trapped last chapter. But you have to kind of think about this whole thing as like extending around. So if we sort of continue to, uh, to draw this, it'll, it'll extend around on either side and like you know, sort of fills in and so this way these hydrogens are trapped inside of the membrane they can't go anywhere except for out through um, the ATP synthase structure at the end so in that respect it'll be very similar to what we were talking about last chapter but there's two things we have to talk about first uh, the first one is this one down here NADH the NADH is coming from the Krebs cycle it's one of the products of Krebs and that NADH is an electron carrier. So what it ends up doing is dropping off the electron at the electron transport chain. So our little electrons represented here. As NADH drops that off, it gives up its hydrogen. And I remember we were talking about last chapter, these electrons are like glue. The electron is what was holding the hydrogen onto NADH. Once that's given up and we're back to NAD+, that electron's released and it's going to start moving down ETC. At the very first part of electron transport chain, it's going to use some energy from that electron to bring a hydrogen into the inner membrane. The electron then keeps moving through ETC, brings in another hydrogen at the third step, then another hydrogen yet again, so three total at the final step. The thing you have to understand is this electron has to go somewhere then. It needs to be able to leave electron transport chain. So remember, we're thinking of these things like glue that hold molecules together. This electron is going to bond hydrogen and oxygen together in order to make a water molecule. So if you remember our formula for respiration, water's on the right-hand side, it's one of the products. Oxygen is on the left-hand side, it's one of the reactants. So this process needs oxygen to be present. Otherwise, that electron has nowhere to go, and you've got to think of this like a highway. This will all get backed up if there's nowhere for that electron to go and it stops working. So uh, that's why this process is complete re completely reliant on oxygen. If you don't have enough oxygen, it will not function correctly. Now going back to the molecules from the Krebs cycle, FADH2 is another one. Uh, if you remember how I explained this before, I said it's an energy carrier. I said it's very similar to NADH but since it has a different structure to it, it's going to be joining at a different step in electron transport chain. So since Fa2 is formed a little bit differently, it doesn't join at the beginning here with NADH, it joins at the second step, which means it drops off its electron here, so that electron passes through one of those larger molecules that brings in a hydrogen, the smaller one, and then another large molecule that brings in a hydrogen. So if you notice, we actually only bring in two hydrogens for each FADH2, whereas we bring in three hydrogens for each of the NADHs. But the same thing happens to the electron from FADH2, it gets to the end, and then it eventually goes to bind a hydrogen and an oxygen together to create a water molecule. That water molecule then stays inside of the matrix. The last thing for us to talk about with this process are all these little hydrogens that are building up inside of this membrane space.
just like last chapter, there's nowhere for them to go since they're charged particles. They cannot just go right through the membrane. They're trapped in here. The only way out is through ATP synthase. So just like last chapter, they're going to diffuse through ATP synthase. As they diffuse through there, ATP synthase rotates. It adds the third phosphate onto ADP, adenosine diphosphate, to make it ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Uh, the final thing to think about is how many ATPs we get from each of these molecules. If we're looking at NADH, since it drops its electron off in the beginning, and that electron brings in three hydrogens on its way down electron transport chain, that means that each NADH molecule technically makes three ATPs, because each of those three hydrogens will eventually leave through ATP synthase, generating an ATP molecule at the end. FADH2, however, joins at the second step, so that only brings in two hydrogens. Each of those two hydrogens will eventually again leave through ATP synthase and create an ATP molecule. So FADH2 only gives the cell two ATPs. So uh, NADH is really worth more energy than the FADH2 molecules are. But they're both coming from the same place, they're both coming from the Krebs cycle, and remember they're both uh, energy carriers, so they're very similar molecules. We'll go to the last page now and do just a quick summary of what we've talked about so far. Uh, just to tie together a few of the main points, the first thing about ETC that you definitely need to remember is that it accepts NADH and FADH2. So it's accepting those from the Krebs cycle. The next thing is that three hydrogens are brought into the membrane from NADH, which tells us that that's going to make three ATP molecules. There's only two hydrogens that are brought in for FADH2, which tells us we're only going to get two ATP molecules from that. The next thing, and this is probably the most important, H2O water, this is referred to as the final electron acceptor. So that's what's taking the electron off of the electron transport chain. This is important because this keeps ETC moving. If it's not for this process, everything breaks down and it stops working, which is why uh, electron transport chain requires oxygen. The oxygen that you're breathing in is what binds with the hydrogen and eventually creates the water molecule. So if you don't have enough oxygen, this process breaks down and it stops working, which means by consequence, the Krebs cycle also stops working because these things it's producing that are accepted in ETC excuse me, they end up having nowhere to go. So uh, the thing that we'll start talking about tomorrow is what happens when this process breaks down. Because if uh, Krebs cycle and ETC are not functioning, your cell still needs ATP, otherwise your cells will start to die. And we talked about what happens if you don't breathe for too long, your brain cells begin to die. So uh, somehow this process has to keep running. It does something a little bit different called fermentation that we'll get into tomorrow. But that's why this is such a big deal that the water is the final electron acceptor and that that water has oxygen in it that's keeping this whole process going from one step to the next. Um, so as always, I appreciate you watching the videos. Make sure you answer the questions, and we'll go over this one when I see you in class. Thanks for watching.